Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reason We Learn. I'm your host, Deb Philman. At The Reason We Learn, we aspire to be part of the solution. The purpose of this show is to take a good, honest, potentially painful look at the way kids are being educated. We know we can do better, and this is where we'll talk about how. Let's learn something. Today, I'm probably going to alienate a lot of people because I know I have a lot of school choice proponents in my audience, Um, but I hope not. I hope I can persuade you to at least hear me out, and if you disagree, that's fine. Obviously, I don't expect everyone to agree with me, but I do want to make sure everybody fully understands my position and takes the time to give it some thought because... I would like you to agree. I wish you would agree. (laughs) It would make fighting for what I want a whole lot easier. So what is it that I want? Well, I wrote a piece published on Substack today entitled, You Shouldn't Settle for School Choice When Education Liberty is a Superior Alternative. The subtitle of which is, Don't Ask for Permission, Demand Your Parental Rights. I do hope you'll go read it. I'm not going to read it to you now in this video. I want you to go read it. It's a little on the longer side relative to my other written pieces, but I hope you understand that it's long because I wanted to make sure I covered the topic properly. So you might be wondering, well, well then what are you here to talk to us about today? <laughs> if you're going to direct us to read an article. Um, well, I'm going to give you an analogy that I talked about the other night in my local Zoom call that I think will help you understand why I think it's kind of ridiculous that we don't question the setup more, question things more the way they are. Um, Before I give you that analogy, before I, I draw that analogy, I wanna read something to you very quickly. It is from UNESCO and it's about global education monitoring. This comes from the Global Education Monitoring Report out this year. This is what UNESCO is advising governments around the world. Global Education Monitoring Report urges governments to see all institutions, students, and teachers. That means public, private, homeschool, everything. Everybody involved in education at all in your country as part of a single system. Standards, information, incentives, and accountability should help governments protect, respect, and fulfill the right to education of all. Well, that seems odd. They need to know all that information to protect our right to education? Doesn't that sound contradictory to you? That means they have to do a whole lot of surveillance before they can protect our rights. Isn't that a violation of our rights? Like, how do you protect rights by violating them first? And that's kind of the gist of what I'm trying to say in my article. Obviously, I think our current system of education in America does violate our rights by its very existence. I do, and I explain why, but but here's an analogy because people often say it is what it is. This is the reality. We have to accept it. Why can't you just accept it? Well, I'll tell you why. Because there are other realities that we accept They kind of contradict this reality right in front of our face and we don't seem to notice the contradiction and I think the government would like it that way. As I point out in the article, there's a reason the government doesn't regulate or monitor how we feed our babies. So we have a baby and most of us have them in the hospital. Even if we don't have them in the hospital, we have a birth certificate shortly thereafter, most of us. I realize there are more and more people who are saying, let's go off the grid and not get a birth certificate. But the second you get that birth certificate, government's put on notice. They're put on notice. A baby has been born in the United States of America. A child exists. A child has been born. And they don't send you flowers and say, congrats, mom, dad, parental unit, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, they They don't do that. No, they're not just, you know, excited for you. They're not saying, another human has joined the human race. Let us all rejoice. Now, they're starting a clock ticking, and they are now somewhere in a computer calculating the age of your child and when that birth date 
clicks past on the computer, a list will be generated of all the children who are now of compulsory age for education. And if you don't show up for school at your assigned school based on your address, of course, and all that stuff is shown on your taxes. You have to pay your taxes. They know who lives in your house. Who your dependents are so i mean technically even without a birth certificate or social security number i mean if you're going to take that kid as a dependent it's they're on the radar so they're going to want to know where's the kid where did you stash the kid you know different states are different some are johnny on the spot with this some are a little lazy and they don't figure it out for a couple years but i mean the point is they can do it and this is a reality that we just accept that's going to happen. That we could have all kinds of good reasons. Parent was sick, forgot to register them, d didn't know the age of compulsion, compulsion. They just moved to the state. They thought it was later. Well, oh, whatever, whatever. Some states it's six, some it's seven. Uh, maybe they thought you could just homeschool. You could just do it. Didn't realize you had to register with state. There's a million reasons why you could, you know, like just kind of not know. Your excuses might not matter. It's really up to their discretion whether they're going to accept your reasons or they're going to punish you in some way. If they decide that now that you're on their radar because you made this mistake, they're going to start surveilling and watching you more closely, they can do that. They could remove the child from the home. They could use this as an impetus to go into your house and start looking at other stuff. It doesn't matter. You get the point. It's compulsory. And I go into some detail in the article about that. But here's my analogy. Okay. You do that for education. They don't do it for feeding, do they? There's nobody who shows up at the hospital, and the nurses certainly don't do this except to know if they should give the baby a bottle. And they don't say, all right, so baby's been born. Um, we have collected a certain amount. We've put you down for the food tax now, the baby feeding tax, the child feeding tax. You, This will now be taken out of your, your pay, your real estate, whatever. Uh, so John, baby, uh, never mind. We're gonna take it from all of you. All the children need to eat. So does not just the babies? But I'm here to find out whether you're going to breastfeed or bottle feed. What's it gonna be? Decide now. Well, I'm not really sure. No, I need to know. I got to put it down because obviously the baby's breathing. The baby's gonna need to eat. We have to monitor this. The age of compulsion for feeding is now. We cut the cord. Let's go. What's it gonna be? Um. Okay. So I, I, I think I'm gonna I'm not really sure can I like decide in an hour I mean maybe see if, how it works out all right so we're gonna put you down then I guess for the breastfeeding is that right okay well here's what you're gonna need to do you've got to do the breastfeeding that's like the home feeding program you know you're not gonna show up at the formula distribution center then this is what we're gonna have to do you need to go for these well visits at, because they're gonna need to weigh the baby you're gonna now don't feed before you go because we're going to need to have a standardized feeding test to make sure that you that your feeding is adequate for this baby. So they need to go for the well, the well check, and they have to weigh in at between this range. And if they don't weigh in, then we're going to, you know, you're going to have to switch the bottle because not getting, the job's not getting done. If the lactation consultant or the doctor says, mm, I, it's not up to the state standards of weight gain and thriving quite yet, you're not producing the amount of milk that we think you need to produce, then you know, we're going to have to switch you over to the, you know, your assigned formula. It's good. You know, it's just going to have to work. And then, you know, let's say all this transpires, you go to the well visits and they decide it's not working out. They're going to have to take away your permission. Or maybe they decide that since you uh, have a health condition or you're taking a certain medication, I'm sorry, the, the breastfeeding thing is not going to work because this would violate, you know, we only allow the people who aren't taking antidepressants, cholesterol meds, blah, 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 whatever, vitamins, whatever you want. I mean, I'm sorry. You're going to have to show up at the formula feeding distribution center. Okay. You show up, you take, get the, my taxpayer funded formula, bring it home. Next day, kids puking their guts out. Kids allergic to the formula. Does not work. They have hives. They've got colic. They are puking. They can't tolerate the formula. They're just, it's not working. You go to the formula distribution center and you tell the superintendent of formula I, I look I, this isn't working i need another brand well that's unfortunate i guess you're gonna have to go buy another brand but you've taken my feeding money you've taken my feeding tax and i need it because the other brand for allergic kids is more expensive 
maybe they have a scholarship. Maybe they have like some kind of funds. I don't know. Like figure it out. Get a donation. Start a GoFundMe. Sorry. Well, hell. What, what am I supposed to do? Now my kid's going to be hungry. Well, that's just, I mean, we have this food here. Yeah, but it's making my child sick. Do you get it? It's, they're sick. They're not thriving. This isn't working. They're miserable. Yeah, well, we provided. We took the money. We provided. This is it. Are you like anti-formula company? Is that what it is? Are you anti-government formula? That must be what it is. You're just an anti-government formula person. I know that's the answer. No, I just, I just want to feed my baby. Okay. So this doesn't happen. None of this occurs. None of this occurs. They also don't say, let's say the formula works reasonably. Kids not puking. They don't say when the child hits like, oh, your child is now chronologically exactly 4.5 years of age. Begin rice cereal. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I've, I've read the literature and I don't, I don't think they're ready. And it, just judging by my child and their growth and their body and everything, I, it's, I'm not going to go with the rice formula. I'm going to, I'm going to hold back and, you know, I had another kid and it's like, did you misunderstand? This is the standard. We don't, you don't get to like redo age four on the feeding plan. If your child needs like feeding remediation, maybe we put them in a program for that and we could figure out how to, you know, we'll put them in the chair, we'll strap them in, we'll give them the rice food and they'll just have to sit and, you know, practice eating it until it stays down, until they'll eat it. What's the problem? Why would I put my child through that? Uh, they don't, I could just give them this longer until they're ready. Do you, have a, do you have a problem? Like, do we need to put you under investigation? Because, you know, the, the experts, the experts know that this is when the feeding begins. It's okay. You put the child on the rice formula, the rice food, whatever. And then you decide, you know what? I think... It's time for them to come off the cereal and start eating vegetables and purees and whatever. What are you doing? Oh, are you still home feeding? We did not give you the appropriate permission to make your own baby food. Well, I don't like the stuff that the, the, the stuff they distribute at the baby food thing. And I'm already eating vegetables. I'm just taking, you know, I'm not even spending extra. Keep my money. It's okay. Keep it. Keep it. I know what happened already with the formula. But we bought carrots for us so we're gonna just you know use some and puree them and we don't like the sugar and we don't like the salt and we know they're organic and we just want to do this we have designed this feeding curriculum to meet all of the best practices of infant feeding this is very rebellious of you i don't know we mean to set you need to go for that well visit to make sure that your child is getting the appropriate nutrients you need to do that Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. Yeah, none of this happens. None of this happens. This doesn't exist. There isn't an infant formula program. There isn't an administration of feeding. There isn't all of this. And yet, what do we know about feeding and its importance? Because, you know, the argument is education is so vital to the development of the child and their ability to thrive. It's like, what parent wouldn't want that? What society would want parents that didn't have, you know, the standard basic education? Da, da, da. That's what we're told. The presumption being parents won't educate their kids if somebody doesn't come along and monitor their every movement while they're doing it and like give them regulations and check in and make sure they're doing it right. But he does have food. Aren't they a little more concerned that the kids might starve to death or be malnourished or be overweight or be unhealthy or have a high cholesterol by the time they're 10? I mean, we know that actually does happen. In fact, it happens probably more than homeschool kids are poorly educated. We know it happens more. But regardless, why isn't the government monitoring the feeding situation? Why aren't they taking this in hand? Why aren't they using the opportunity to enrich their crony formula of making big pharma companies? Why? But why do they do with education instead? Well, we know that feeding is vital to the well-being of the child, the survival of the child. But what is education really? I mean, could a child survive without knowing their ABCs? Whatever? I mean, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be optimal, but they could survive. But what would have a harder time if the kid didn't go, especially to the government school? 
the survival of what? The well-being of what depends upon the children being educated according to certain standards, ideally designed by the government. Whose well-being and survival depends on that? Well, it's not the child, is it? No, it's the government. So that in a nutshell is the promo for my article. But I don't want to make a very long video, so I'm not going to read it to you. I would ask that you please go read it. Please support my Substack. I don't ask often for you guys to, you know, literally support my work, but I'm going to ask, please <laughs> consider if you can, supporting the work. Um, it is something I do, obviously, because I love and care about America's children very much. I care about this country. I care about all of you. I want to empower parents to defend their parental rights, obviously. That's why I do all of this. But in order to keep doing it, certainly at the rate that I am doing it, um, I need to periodically come here and ask for your support. So all, there's all kinds of different ways that you can support this work. You can like this video, share this video, comment on this video. You can buy some merchandise from my store, a little Reason We Learn t-shirt or bag or something that is available on my Reason We Learn link tree. There's a link right up there. Uh, you can be a paid subscriber of the Patreon or subscribe star and you get some different content there than you get here. You get it ad free, put it that way. And you can subscribe to the Substack. Ad free content there as well. Also podcasts is there. So I'm trying to give value for value, but it all matters. It helps. I greatly appreciate it. You have no idea how much. I really, really do. I know that we're in tough times and you can't subscribe to everybody and you can't support everyone. And there's so many amazing creators out there. Believe me, I support some of them myself, as ironic as that is. So, but it really does help and I appreciate it. And so I'm asking for your support. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll take to heart what I've said. And I do hope you'll go and read the Substack article. We shouldn't settle for school choice when education liberty is a superior alternative. Thanks for watching.